And we are underway here inside the Bill Ebrock Eagle Dome for this matchup between the TCC Eagles and the Gulf Coast State Commodores. Another day of play here in the Panhandle Conference. Gulf Coast State wins the tip. The TCC with a defensive stop to get things started. I'm Brett Rutherford alongside William Haynes here inside the Eagle Dome. William, Eagles still looking for their first conference win, and it won't be easy today. Another ranked team here inside the Eagle Dome. There's Chambers with the score to get on the board first for the Eagles. Good job by TCC there to get on the board and, and start the game off with the lead. Another defensive stop and rebound here. That was Denisha Bowles on the rebound. Now here's Polina pulling up for three on the other end. Off the glass and in. Early 5-0 lead here for the Eagles. The last game for TCC, we were here against Northwest Florida. A lot of good open looks, just could not convert on a lot of shots. A nice job there to knock down a three. And a steal poked away by Devine Guthrie, but going to be a tie-up. Jump ball. Should be Eagle basketball after losing the opening tip. You know, I, I say that TCC is still looking for their conference win, but the visitors today, the Commodores, also looking for theirs. The battle of 0-2 teams in conference play. Both teams desperately looking for a win here. Gulf Coast State still putting together a solid season, 11-6 and six on the year. I apologize if I'm out of breath. If you heard me at the start of the broadcast, over by the scorer's table announcing the starting lineups. Now rushing over here for the start of the game, and we'll get a whistle. You're a do-it-all guy, Brett. <laughs> yeah, what can I say? Uh, but going over those starting lineups, once again, Olivia Eller back in. She's missed quite a few games now with an ankle injury, suffered earlier in the non-conference part of the schedule. She's back in, and, and it, honestly, another player that's, that's been here for you know two seasons prior to this. It's really good to have another experienced player back in the rotation, and a foul called there. That one on Denisha, on Denisha Bowles. But again, just trying to really, I think I think more so what's more important about Eller's return is it's just another player in Coach Cohen's rotation because he's had to play such a shallow rotation with all the injuries they've deal, they've been dealing with. And honestly, I think it puts a lot of strain on, on, on the women that are picking up those minutes. It's tough to play, especially in this conference, this level of physicality, having to play in, in what is 40 minutes of basketball, 30-plus minutes every game it, it, it's a tough ask definitely depth is one of the most important things you can have on your team and, and we saw TCC, TCC struggle with lack of depth in the last game that's definitely a big factor here for turning this thing around Eller broke out of the pressure and now Eagles get set here's Bowles driving inside that shot no good she gets the rebound though fresh 20 for the Eagles now Olivia Eller has it from for three no good rebounded again this one Polina Nikolochkina Divine Guthrie, mid-range jumper. That one doesn't go, but another offensive board. Eagles came to play. Olivia Eller gives the Eagles another fresh 20. Polina from downtown, no good. Not able to get any points there in that possession, but nice job to crash the offensive glass and find the open player. And another jump ball here as Polina goes in to grab the ball, and this one will stay on this side of the floor, but I think no shortage of effort from the Eagles here starting out at home. Absolutely not, coming out with a lot of energy. And, and, you know, if you can play like that on the offensive boards consistently, give yourself an extra possession here and there, that's going to go a long way. Inbound goes all the way back to number 11, Amani Smith for Gulf Coast State. Smith averaging nine points a game. That shot, misfire from Avalon Miller. We saw her last year on this Commodores team, one of the bigger contributors. Not only in scoring, but also grabbing rebounds, playing defense, has been a huge part of their success. Polina goes inside Chambers in the low post, backs herself up, dishes to Bowles. And we'll get a whistle. Looks like it'll be a foul against Gulf Coast State. A lot of ball movement there by TCC trying to move this Commodore defense around. I think if you're the Eagles, you need to find multiple ways to score. You can't rely on the three-point shot. You can't rely on trying to beat players like Anaya Boyd and Avalon Miller down low. Chambers there pulls up. I think that's another option, using the mid-range game. We know how good Gulf Coast State can be. And going the other way, that one was poked away, but that was Morgan Robinson. It still stays, and Amani Smith knocks down the three for the Commodores. Got the end one to go as well. 
Uh, yeah, I missed that foul call entirely. And this could tie the game. A four-point play on the line here for Imani Smith. She's 83.3% from the free throw line this season. TCC with an early substitution. Chambers coming out already. And knocks it down to Tyus at five. Kira Mullity entering the game. As is Mayanna Garrett. Full court pressure here for the Commodores. TCC has got to move this ball around. And that's a 10 second violation. They can't break through the pressure. That was something Northwest Florida did uh, in the last game uh, against TCC. A lot of full court pressure forcing TCC to move the ball the width of the floor. In the second half, they did a much better jo uh, job of adjusting around it, but uh, the Commodores are uh, able to force an early turnover with that strategy. Uh, maybe watch some film from that last game against Northwest Florida. Utilizing that pressure early on here. And they're going to get a foul called on Garrett. Officials are not afraid to use their whistles early on. We're only three and a half minutes into the action here. Inbound goes to Robinson. That one lost, but Olivia Eller, great job Got keeping that one in play. Now Eagles moving in transition. Garrett over to Guthrie. Here's Bowles. Much better job of forcing the ball down the floor here on this possession. Got it to the front court in a hurry. Eller off the dribble, tries to get it to Guthrie. Guthrie mishandled the pass, keeps it though. Now into the corner for Garrett. Five seconds on the shot clock. Here's Kara Mullity driving herself and gets one off the glass and in. Kara Mullity. Couldn't Lucky find it. any open shots on the perimeter. Just drive it down the lane and take it yourself. Luck of the Irish there for Kara Mullity. That one falling just perfectly off the glass. I say that, but it was, it was a great shot. Just had to get the Irish joke in there. <laughs> TCC off to a really good start on both sides of the floor, rebounding. Yeah, creating extra possessions, making sure the Gulf Coast State doesn't have second chances to score, and that's, that's part of the reason I got a 7-5 lead. Here's Eller in the corner, 4-3. Hits it, Olivia Eller. If you get shots open like that, you've got to knock them down, and, and a good way to convert right there. I don't often like to compare the men's and women's teams, but I, I think coming back from injury, two important players, one on either team. You saw Byron Smith when he came back from injury on the men's side. He's a, the type of guard. He's not going to score in bunches. He's capable of it, but that's not necessarily what his role is on the team, but slows the game down, controls the tempo, dishes it out, comes up with a lot of great passes. I think Olivia Eller's presence back in this rotation, in the starting lineup for this women's team, has been huge, and we're seeing it pay off early on today. Absolutely. Byron Smith and other guys, well, just a great playmaker, can take it himself when he has to, and uh, that, that is the kind of player that you always want to have on your team in your back pocket when you need a quick bucket. Morgan Robinson, one of the, a few Division I bounce backs on this Gulf Coast State team. Not only was she Division I, but played in the SEC for Auburn. Here's Denisha Bowles outside to Eller. Great pass, though. Garrett swings it over to Bowles. Now right back inside to Garrett. And again, there's that ball movement for the Eagles, and it ends in a score. Yeah, the Eagles passed up a couple open three-point shots, but they, they found an opportunity. They liked a little bit better going towards the glass. Garrett does well to fight for the ball here. I think we're going to get another tie-up. And that will be Eagle basketball. They've got a 12-6 lead, 4.47 to play here in the first quarter. Mullity. Now here's Denisha Bowles. Keeping their, I know they had the one 10 second violation, but what they're not doing is they're not giving the ball away. They're not, they're, they're not letting Gulf Coast State create those steals. Yes, they had the one 10 second violation. You don't want to see it happen again, but they're not letting Gulf Coast State move in transition by forcing turnovers. That shot, she is fouled. That is Sedasia Payne. Yeah, the Eagles are really dictating the terms of this game right now to the Commodores, as he said. They're really good on possessions, really good on rebounding, keeping those turnovers down. Uh, a lot of time of possession, and uh, it's resulting to a lot of points here early on. Yeah. Going through some of the other Division One bounce backs on this team, one of them's on the court right now. Peyton Gray for Gulf Coast State played at, well, was, was attending Cal State Northridge. 
did not appear in a game last season, but also Anaya Boyd, number 32, also on the floor, played in the ACC last year for, for Georgia Tech. So Deja Payne hits the second free throw, making it 14 to six. Diana Garrett right in there to break up the inbound pass. Gulf Coast State will have to try again. TCC now going with a little bit of full court pressure here. I like to see it. You've already done a good job of making Gulf Coast State uncomfortable and you get in their heads a little bit more by, by applying this full court pressure, uh, maybe forcing some more mistakes here. Here is Boyd, she's gotta get one off, she does, finds Robinson. And now, maybe Gulf Coast State in trouble of a 10-cent vi violation. They will get it over with a second to spare. Just in time. Boyd over to Smith in the corner for three. Hits it. Imani Smith. And that's one thing against the full court pressures. You know, if they're able to get the ball down the floor, there's usually an open player, and the Commodore is able to find him right there. Olivia Eller. Now Guthrie looks to swing it over to Payne. Keeps it herself. Drives, penetrates, and a blocking foul called there on Peyton Gray. And a great Euro step there from Devine Guthrie to draw that foul. Here's Mullity, 12, 10 on the shot clock. Denisha Bowles in the corner. Misfires, rebounded though, Sadeja Payne, she fouled and won. A huge bucket there from Sadeja Payne. Can't get that three point shot in the corner to go, get that three point play the old fashioned way. You love to see it. Sadeja Payne heading to the line, she is shooting 61.1%. That one goes back off back iron, but another offensive rebound, Bowles finds Garrett. Now here's Payne again from mid-range, and they're gonna call a travel on Sadeja Payne. I think she is admitting she slipped there and shuffled her feet a bit. So it was a little hard to see from up here, but Sadeja seemed to recognize that maybe her feet weren't completely still. Now Imani Smith can't get out of the pressure, and a forced turnover. Here's Miana Garrett off the glass, and another bucket for the Eagles. Do they force another steal here? No, they find Payton and Sinesia Payne pokes it right away. The Eagles create another possession here. Bowles over into the wing. That's, here is Mayetta Garrett. Can't hit the three. So what we were talking about earlier, if you can get in the Gulf Coast State's head, get them frustrated, trying to force the ball in places they shouldn't be, able to create some turnovers, and um, you do that with offensive rebounds, you're creating a lot of extra possessions here early on. I think you see Sadeja Payne, who gets called for the travel, and immediately creates a turnover, gets the ball right back. That sort of relentlessness, leave that last play behind, that is going to be huge today. The Eagles already up to a nine point lead. That foul called, I believe, on Olivia Eller. That'll be her second foul, so I don't know if she's come off the floor yet, but looks like she'll remain there for the time being. It looks like maybe Sadeja Payne will, will check in for Eller now. Eller a little frustrated with herself. That free throw from Boyd rims out. The former Georgia Tech product, 73.3% from the stripe so far this season. That one does get the healthy roll, and now, now Payne will, will come in for Eller. Bowles over to Payne, pulls up from the baseline, wait a little too much on that one, but again, another offensive rebound, that pass goes right in the hands of Anaya Boyd though, who's moving in transition behind the back dribble, she thinks about taking the shot, finds Morgan Robinson, who does shoot from three, another offensive rebound from t uh, from Al Hassan, and but ultimately the Eagles come away with it, that's that shot good from Devine Guthrie. Yeah, on the four down for Gulf Coast. 
Musha Rafael Hassan, an in, interconference transfer there. Found her way to Gulf Coast State by way of Northwest Florida State. So she was a national champion last year there for the Raiders. Morgan Robinson comes off the dribble. That one rejected there. Don't know who got the block, but ultimately she gets it back, puts up the shot, and scores. Sadeja Payne. Looked like there was a lot of contact there. No foul called. That ball goes out of play and will head the other way. A minute and a half to play in the first quarter. Eagles leading 20 to 12. With the first quarter almost to a close. You couldn't have really asked for a better start for TCC. Already an eight-point lead. Robinson bringing it up. The handoff goes to Siante down. She collides with Imani Smith. Smith trying to go over to Robinson who can't completely handle that pass. Has to avoid the official there but finally finds Smith. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Here's Boyd. Drives and she is tripped up by Sedasia Payne. The Eagles bench thought maybe Payne had grabbed the ball but I think just maybe a little bit too much contact there. A little bit. Good job, though, to, to get the hand on the ball, even if it's uh, not the person you're guarding. You get the hands on the basketball, try and create those turnovers. Yeah, another thing I think the Eagles have done well so far tonight is not letting Gulf Coast State move downhill. Not letting maybe fouls like that help with that. Not letting them create those easy buckets in the paint, taking their momentum in with them where they can draw shooting fouls and, and ultimately put up more points. Boyd hits the free throw. And this one short and rebounded. That's Nia Bostic into the game for the first time this afternoon. Payne tries to find Mullity who had a backdoor cut. Now lays it off to Guthrie. And again, some great ball moving there. They're going to say ultimately that one was poked out by Gulf Coast State. Maybe could have been a foul there. Garrett inbounding, finds Payne. Less than a minute to play now. 15 on the shot clock for the Eagles. Payne over to Mullity. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Inside, now over to the corner. Bostic, 4-3. It's good. Nia Bostic. Great ball movement there. Draw him inside the key and then find the open shot in the corner there. Robinson pulls up. That one blocked. And they're going to call a foul. Again, another... I think slightly late whistle on Miana Garrett. Did not see a whole lot of contact there on that shot contest. And again, maybe she clipped the hand and the official on that side of the floor will, probably would have had a better angle on that than us. Um, but Morgan Robinson heading to the free throw line. Misses the first. There's 33 seconds remaining in this quarter. And this one is good, so that cuts the deficit to just eight for Gulf Coast State. But Eagles, potentially the last possession of the first quarter. Mullity takes it herself and scores. Eagles scoring at will. They've got 24 now in the first quarter. I haven't checked. That might be a season high in terms of first quarter points for the Eagles. Just about everything has gone their way so far, and they've been able to convert on the opportunities they need to. Downs. Out here, Smith. Ten seconds left in the quarter. Robinson. Loses the handle, keeps with it, has to try to find a teammate. She does. Boyd swings it over to Smith. 4-3, can't hit it. And that'll do it. One last shot attempt. I don't know if she got it off in time. It doesn't matter. The Eagles will head into the second quarter with a 10-point lead. You're watching TCC Basketball live on TCCEagles.com.
back here before the start of the second quarter and man what a start for the eagles 24 to 14 lead and what was i i guess i think the perfect start really and really perfect uh team basketball they're doing everything the right way checking all the boxes naya bostic stays on the floor with kira Mullady, divine guthrie Miami garrett and sedasia Payne. This one over to the corner, Cianti Downs. Here's Smith for three. Doesn't hit. Gets the rebound now. Swings it over, stolen by Sadeja Payne, forcing yet another turnover. Takes it herself, coast to coast. Can't get the shot to go. Mullady going to try to keep it in play. She does. Throws it off. What a great play there from both Sadeja Payne and then Kiara Mullady to keep the ball on this side of the floor. And you've been talking about it, Brett, really aggressive defense so far for TCC. And if you can force those kind of turnovers on just kind of some errant uh, passes the width of the floor, create some extra opportunities. That's the name of the game right now. Here's Garrett with it. Now Mullity inside to Payne, who has been a spark plug for the Eagles today. Mullity gets tied up, and they're going to call travel there. Gulf Coast State coming off an overtime loss against Pensacola State, 72-71, a heartbreaker for Gulf Coast State. Here's a three-point attempt from three, and there's contact from Sedasia Payne. It'll be three free throws for Smith, who is 83.3%. Pretty money for the charity strike. A lot, of, a lot of this Commodores team shoots really well from the free throw line. goes Smith for her first attempt. Hits it. We talk about that Northwest Florida State team already defending a national title, still sitting at number one in the rankings. It appears from the last time I checked, I'll make a correction from an earlier statement, Gulf Coast State has fallen out of that top 25 after a couple of losses. That one missed and rebounded by Nia Bostic. Bostic over to Nikoloch Kina. Now inside to Mullady. Backdoor cut from Payne. Ultimately, I thought she was going to lose it, but she comes away with it. And a foul on the floor. That one called against Diabate. The freshman out of France. Maybe an adjustment the Commodores made between quarters. That's been a go-to play so far for the Eagles. Get the, get the pass down low. They did a good job of guarding it there. We, we had mentioned that Gulf Coast State was in those rankings. This inbound goes all the way back to Payne. It was tipped by Diabate, but Payne ultimately comes away with it. Now here's Olivia Eller losing to two other ranked teams in Northwest Florida, who's the number one team, and only losing by six. Mullady, 4-3, way too much on that one. And then losing to Pensacola State in overtime, another ranked team who that's in the top ten. Do you think it's fair for the Commodores to have fallen outside of that ranking after, after those two performances? With how competitive it is, I, I really do think you got to win those games. And uh, the really interesting part of how good this Panhandle Conference is, the Commodores fall out. Still three of the five teams in this conference are in the top 25, and three of them in the top 16. Ciciante Downs at the free throw line now. You, you look around, and yeah, six losses, maybe a little too much to be in the top 25. There are some four-loss teams. There's at South Georgia Tech there, 15-4. and four. Chipola also in this league, 16-3. and three. That free throw attempt gets a healthy bounce. And Downs hits it. 14 and 4. Casper College down 24th. That one missed and rebounded by Guthrie. You talk about Gulf Coast State falling out of the rankings after a couple of tough losses. Uh, the TCC men's team got fell on kind of the same sword with just a tough schedule break early playing two top really teams. They're a good squad. They just, they've just really faced awesome squads. Eller inside to Guthrie and kind of just puts a shot up, but does draw the foul. Hits to her first attempt. 
Just under 51% from the free throw line this season for Guthrie. That was two for two. As a theme today, everything's seemingly going right for the Eagles. A player that makes about half their free throw shots sinks both of them with ease. You gotta bank as many points as you can early on. A little bit of pressure here. Gulf Coast State break, breaks out of it now. In the corner though, that pass not handled very well by Taylor Jarrells. Commodores couldn't really get out of their own way. They had probably two or three players wide open and uh, just a little bit antsy there getting the ball out. I don't know if she took her eye off the ball just a split second too soon, but that was a pretty simple pass right there. Hit her in the chest. Ultimately couldn't come down with it. Polina after the back door cut. Divine Guthrie, that shot I think blocked. And now going the other way, Smith. And again, another pass going nowhere. I, I'll say that that was the first one that really didn't find anyone. Seven forty to play in the half. Eagles leading by nine. Here's Denisha Bowles. Cuts inside and we're gonna get an offensive foul. They're gonna say she used her elbow to create space. It wasn't the most emphatic call. I wasn't sure if it was a walk or, or, or something else, but foul called on Bowles. Jarrells outside to Cracknell. That shot blocked. Oh, no, a foul called on Sadasia Payne. She's got to be in some foul trouble here. That'll be Payne's. So only her second. I thought she had more than that. Today, so far, has definitely not been an, an example of one of those games where the officials are just letting them play. A lot of fouls here. Yeah, a lot of whistles. First free throw hit by Cracknell, the freshman, another Australian. Seen a lot of those lately. Avoca Beach, Australia. I have to be honest, I don't know where exactly on the island that's located. If we can really call Australia an island, it is massive. This isn't geography class, but I don't know, maybe we need to get Brianna Chambers on a halftime show and talk a little bit about Australian geography. Over to Mullady on the baseline. Now here's Sadasia Payne in the paint. Dishes to Eller. She goes right back to Payne. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Keeps it herself. Pulls up in the paint and hits it. Sadasia Payne. Has she been an impact player or what so far this afternoon? Pain has been everywhere on both sides of the floor. I think a lot of it, if she can stay healthy, she is. Oh, another one there poked away. They keep it. It's downs, but it's still loose. And ultimately a travel called. And I'll give that one to Sedasia Payne as well. She is all over the place. I think if healthy, she is one of the most electric players, not only on this team, but in the Panhandle Conference. And absolutely, the player that we're seeing today, I mean, th this is elite. You see, in, in all aspects of sports, I am always a huge proponent of defense. And Sadasia Payne's been scoring today, but her defense, I think, and defense in general is undervalued, and she has just been incredible on both ends of the floor. It's really picked the team up today. It just gives you so much energy when you're able to create those kind of turnovers. And Kara Mullity knew it. She shuffled her feet. Thought she could sidestep the defender and drive inside, but it's called for the travel. And, you know, I'm not going to be the, the old man and say, oh, defense wins championships. But defense, especially in this sport, turns to offense. And creating turnovers is one of the best, way to, best ways to create scoring chances for your team on the other ends. The great dribble move there from Jarrells goes outside to crack now. That shot way offline. Payne collects it. And with 5.40 to play, Eller bringing it up for the Eagles. The reality is you're not going to be lights out from the field every single game, so it's really about volume. The most shots, the most possessions you can get, the better. Even if you're not having a great day shooting the ball, the more possessions you can get, obviously, more points. That one stolen by Diabate. 
Here's Downs, taking it inside. Sedasia Payne trying to draw the contact, and she does. Sedasia Payne drove the charge, and she has just been incredible this afternoon. And you see she gets the sly smile and high five from Coach Joe Cohen, who can't be anything but impressed with her performance. Whatever the equivalent of is, is hitting uh, hitting for the cycle in basketball, I think Sedasia Payne is, is getting close to that she, right she now. She is doing it all. Here's Garrett bringing it up, and you, you, you can see we've played almost five minutes in this quarter. Only four points scored in the period for the Eagles. The scoring has slowed down, but the effort on both ends, the ball movement, has not. They have kept that up, and that's still why they've got a 19-point lead, only five points scored from Gulf Coast State in this quarter. Garrett pulls up that one short and rebounded by Robinson. Now Cracknell again. Bostic steps up to defender and... Does get whistled for the foul. No, it'll actually be called on. I don't. I saw a three in the hand motion there, but it wasn't Mayanna Garrett. We will get a timeout on the floor. This will be a muted timeout. So we'll step aside. Eagles leading this one 28 19. You're watching TCC Basketball Live on TCCEagles.com and YouTube. And with under five minutes to play here in the first half, Eagles still lead by nine. They enter the quarter leading by 10. And even when the scoring has slowed down for both teams, they've managed to keep it a pretty comfortable lead to this point. Yeah, without TCC has done on the offensive glass, I think they, they're just fine playing a defensive game. Cracknell misses that first free throw attempt. She struggled from the line this season. That one rolls in, so... We'll make it 28-20, Eagles lead. Commodores enter the bonus as well for the final five minutes of the quarter. Here's Nyan Bostic. Finds Divine Guthrie, that one poked back into their own half of the floor. They'll have 15 seconds left to get set again. Here's Polina. Now Garrett swung over to Bostic, and she had a foot on the line. This one will move the other way. Mm. Got to watch it now. Got to watch it with the turnovers. You've still got the eight-point lead. But the worst time to let the opposition go on a run is going into the break towards the end of the second quarter. Seems like in every sport that that's the theme. If you can finish out the half strong and then start the second half strong, you're going to give yourself a great chance to win. You see, I don't know if that's actually true, but it's something that I've heard other people say, so <laughs> I just repeat it. No, I, I think there is something to it. Uh, in a lot of different sports uh, where, where there's a halftime. You don't want to go into the break where you, you think everything's going to be jolly, and then all of a sudden head coach realizes, the team realizes, we've got to make some adjustments. You'd rather go into that break thinking, wow, look at all these things we did well. Here's what we can do even better in the second half to carry this lead on and, and, and turn it into a victory. Yeah, I mean, we'll talk about it in a couple of hours when we're calling the men's game, but when they were playing uh, Pensacola State, they started off with that huge lead. Then Pensacola State, the Pirates, they closed out the, the first half well, brought it within six, and then they really dominated coming out of the second half as well. Got themselves back into the game, uh, playing well in that period of time. Definitely. Miller's second free throw attempt is good, so that does make it 28-21.
Love a nice bucket here to get the momentum back on the Eagles side. That one goes out of play, but it went off of Diabate, so will stay. Garrett going to inbound here, under four to play in the half. And both players hit the deck. This one will stay again. Olivia Eller, you just kind of hope that ankle holds up. TCC's been pushing the basketball towards the baseline a lot as of late. It seems like maybe there's some space on the perimeter they could take some advantage of. Garrett inbounding again. She's got to find somebody. She does find Guthrie. Tiptoes on the sideline. Keeps herself in. Now on over to Polina, but it's poked away and out of play. Eagles will retain possession once more. Last couple of offensive possessions a little bit discombobulated. Again, just got to get back to what you were doing to build this lead. Mayanna Garrett. Three seconds on the shot clock. Has to put a shot up. Polina, I think, finally realized that she had to heave one up. And before it came down, the shot clock did expire. So Gulf Coast State will get the ball nonetheless, but they'll just have to restart. Crack now over to Robinson now. Here's Downs. Back into the corner for Crack now. Three-point attempt. Can't hit it. And we're going to get a foul called. Uh, I believe that's on Diabate. It'll be fourth foul for Gulf Coast. Made their way over from Panama City. I looked, I'm starting to look into, there's a Eagles take the road trip over to Panama City in a couple of weeks. Mullady breaks out of that double team, finds Polina, has some space to drive inside, she doesn't, she's fouled. I was looking, and my girlfriend and I maybe going to take a weekend trip. If the weather is in the 60s, I think I can do the beach. Maybe I'm not sitting on the beach all day, but I can maybe go to a restaurant on the beach, get a cheap hotel room because it's the end of January and see the Eagles take on the Commodores at their place. So if my girlfriend bails, William, maybe I'll have the hotel room booked and we can share it. Sounds aces, Brett. All right. <laughs> I've got my eyes on Panama City maybe for spring break. I've never been, but I've heard a lot of great things. See, that's a time of the year when I think I will avoid Panama City, but you go ahead. You go ahead. Polina at the free throw line. Eagles at that 29 points still. Three minutes to play in the half. I've not seen a ton from Polina so far this afternoon. It seemed like the offense was really running through her during the Northwest Florida game, but so far they've been able to spread the ball around. But yeah, 16 points, leading scorer in that game. That might be a key in the second half, maybe getting her the basketball a little bit more if the offense stagnates. Yeah, and a foul there from Guthrie will send Cracknell to the line. And, uh, yeah, I think maybe that's a good sign, a healthy sign. Obviously, Polina has still contributed today. But you look at players like Sadeja Payne, Kiara Mullody. I mentioned the presence of Olivia Eller back in the lineup, what that means. I think creating those other options. We are not relying on Polina. Or if she goes on a cold streak to the game, which happens to everybody, you're not going on a complete cold streak on the floor. Now the Eagles have slowed up in their scoring here, but they still got that comfortable lead. Crack now misses that second free throw. Polina collects it. You'd like to see him get back to a double-digit lead before halftime now. Two and a half, here's Olivia Eller. Now Polina, less than 10 on the shot clock, loses it, still loose on the floor and we're gonna get a jump ball called. But great job from Polina there to follow that ball on the floor. And another thing of note, I've, I've mentioned it, we've seen Anna play this season, we've seen Polina play this season, I've gotta go through. At least at home, they haven't shared the floor. I get used to calling them by their first names because they share the floor a lot when they're both healthy. This year hasn't been the case, but I'll, I'll, I'll still continue, I think, using their first name for the time being. Eller had to get a shot up, but Gulf Coast State will come away with it. Robinson trying to take it coast to coast. Goes off the side of the glass, but rebounded and put away by Jalea McCain. Cuts the lead to just seven now with a little over two to play. 
Eagles in, can, can really use a field goal, but a foul called there on Cracknell. Eagles now are in the bonus. We saw Polina hit a couple of free throws, but I think, you know, a, a field goal would really get them settled back into this game again. Guthrie hit both of her free throws her last time at the stripe. Gets the first one to fall. It's a clean stroke, one you can replicate over and over and over again. I know that's a big key for a lot of people uh, trying to create a good uh, shot from the free throw line. Goes two for two. And again, points are points. Here's Downs, takes it in, Mullody I think try their best not to foul her there. But that gave Downs the space to be able to score. Another time, TCC goes with full court pressure and they get burned a little bit. Commodore has done a good job of getting it down the floor. And a great move from Eller to break the pressure. It goes all the way to Mullity, who can't hit the three from the corner. Now here comes Gulf Coast State trying to move quickly. Now Downs will slow up. A minute and a half to go in the half. Robinson handoff to Downs. Now it's Robinson all alone. Nobody there to guard her, but she still can't hit the three. Rebounded, Guthrie. And a timeout called by Coach Cohen. I think that was a good time to use that timeout. A minute and a half to play in the first half. Eagles lead 32-25. You're watching TCC Basketball on tccegles.com. Tallahassee Community College has been named as one of the top 10 community colleges in the nation. The Aspen Institute recognizes institutions from across the country that have exceptional achievements and a total commitment to improving student outcomes. The college was recognized as one of the nation's premier community colleges eligible to compete for the prestigious $1 million Aspen Prize for Community College Excellence because of its focus on student access and success, its workforce training initiatives, a seamless and high transfer rate to four-year colleges and universities, and its many varied and productive community partnerships. This recognition from the Aspen Institute is a testament to the wonderful work of the faculty, staff, and leadership at Tallahassee Community College. All right, inching closer to halftime. And, and, and William, I think the Eagles, again, still holding on to a seven-point lead, but that timeout from Coach Cohen trying to make some offensive adjustments here to build that lead back up again before halftime. Definitely a good time to draw something up that you feel confident in, get some momentum back on your side. Mullody has to keep it in play, and we see her do it again. Throw it off of McCain as she, to keep her balance there. Yeah, nice heads up play just to kind of get out of the trap and reset a little bit off the inbound. Inbound does go to Polina Nikolochkina. Eller from way downtown, no good. Minutes of play in the half. Robinson is fouled as she goes up. Hands in the air, but ultimately someone was whistled for the foul. And it will be Olivia Eller. She charged the lane and tucked the basketball like a football there. Was not going to give that basketball up under any means. Morgan Robinson back at the free throw line. Does hit the first to make it 32-26. And ultimately, even as they shrink this lead, you don't want to let them have that sense of momentum. And I don't think they quite have it yet. If they put a couple more buckets in before that buzzer sounds, maybe they will. Polina cross-court pass to Sadasia Payne. Gets it into Mullody. They almost did a great job breaking that pressure, but ultimately they turn it over and we get a foul called as I think Mullody, I don't know if that'll be Mullody or Guthrie, but Either way, Smith hit the deck. That was on Divine Guthrie. Her third foul, so something to watch there. Oops. 
Amani Smith this season, shooting 83.3% from the free throw line. Misses that one, though. That's a big one. And I had mentioned earlier, I mean, the Commodores, they have multiple players that are over 80% uh, from the charity stripe, but really that's been a big weakness for them so far today. Have not sh uh, shot well at all from the free throw line. Now it's just a four-point game with under a minute to go in the first half. That one poked away. Garrett collects it. Goes right back to Sadeja Payne. They've got to advance it quickly. They do get it over, and Polina gets hit hard from behind. The Gulf Coast State bench thinking there could have been a 10-second call there. I think the pass was off. It maybe hadn't cra crossed the line. I don't know what the rule is, if the ball has to be across or if the ball is passed. Because I think what happened is Garrett got the pass off, but the ball had maybe hadn't crossed that center line before those 10 seconds expired. And it's a hard call to make because there's no buzzer, there's no other visual or audio cue other than watching the clock to know when that, that those 10 seconds expire. But that one was a close play. Ultimately, the Eagles get a chance to, the free throw, to go to the free throw line out of it. And Polina hits that second one to make it 33-28. Four seconds separating shot and game clock here as Gulf Coast State brings it up. Here's Downs. Takes it herself, scores, and will head to the line for one more. And there is that change in momentum that I was talking about here. Gulf Coast State slowly creeping back into this game. A chance to cut it to just a two-point lead for the Eagles if Downs can convert this free throw. Yeah, and I think the, the biggest sign of momentum that the Commodores have is, is knowing that the, uh, the offensive success that TCC found early on has not been there as of late. Just Polina. about everything that they had open, all the gaps have been closed. Asia Payne keeps it herself, penetrates, puts that shot up, and it goes in. A great bucket there from Asia Payne to keep her composure through traffic. 12 seconds to play in the half. Robinson bringing it up this very well. Could be the last possession before the break. Robinson comes off the screen. And she, it'll be a jump ball as Garrett gets her hands in there cleanly with 5.4 seconds left. So it will stay on this side, but Gulf Coast State will have to reset and inbound. Smith is set to inbound this basketball. 5.4 to go. She goes inside. That shot goes up. No good. Still a fight for the rebound. A second left, and Garrett will just hold on to it as, clock expi as the clock expires in the first half. The Eagles are leading 35-31, but Gulf Coast State has a six-point lead in the second quarter and maybe some momentum going into the break. Absolutely. I think they have momentum, and uh, as I said, really all the gaps between these two teams have been closed. It's a pretty much a whole new ball game coming out of halftime, so that energy that TCC came out with to start the game, they're going to have to bring that out after halftime. Well, we're going to step aside for halftime here. Eagles lead 35-31 against the Gulf Coast State Commodores. You're watching TCC Basketball live on tccegles.com. <laughs> 